Master Chief's armor, or the Mjolnir armor, is the most advanced piece of tactical military hardware in human hands. The UNSC spent countless hours on research and development to get this armor to work properly. In this video, I'll be breaking down each piece of the armor and showing you exactly how each piece works. I've also been doing some research trying to compare some things about the Mjolnir armor that we have today in our own technology. Keep in mind though that this armor exists 500 years in the future, so there are some components of it that just don't exist today. Master Chief's suit of armor weighs about 700 pounds. The bulk of that weight is made up of a titanium alloy, which is very strong and lightweight, even though the suit weighs about 700 pounds. Pure titanium itself has a relatively low melting point for metals. If pure titanium was used for Chief's armor, plasma weapons could melt right through it, which would cause a problem. We're not exactly sure in the exact specifications of the alloy of titanium used in Master Chief's armor, but we do know that it's very strong while being relatively lightweight. Because of its makeup, it also provides some passive resistance against plasma weaponry, but it won't work forever. Underneath Chief's titanium plating, there is a heat reducing gel layer. This is the black undersuit that you see in most Spartans. This undersuit is actually also titanium based, which makes it incredibly strong but also very flexible. The black undersuit also has a heat reducing coating. This coating helps dissipate extra heat from plasma weapons. There isn't anything like this that exists now in real life. If it does, then it's top secret and I can't access it from Google. If anything, I feel like I'm getting put on like an FBI watch list from Googling all this stuff. But US soldiers actually use something pretty similar. Now, it's not a black undersuit that's made of titanium, but before US soldiers were equipped with this pullover, they had to wear 100% cotton shirts whenever they were going out into battle. That's because polyester can melt to your skin if there's too much heat applied to it. So if someone was caught in an explosion and they were wearing polyester, it would melt into their skin causing burn injuries that were much worse than if they were just caught in the same explosion. These dry fit shirts aren't going to stop plasma weapons, but they might help a soldier a little bit if they were caught in an explosion. Underneath the black undersuit, there's a hydrostatic gel layer. This hydrostatic gel is what saved Master Chief when he fell from space in the beginning of Halo 3. This layer of gel works by changing its pressure to react to high velocity impacts like bullets or a fall from space. It works kind of how Kevlar and other bulletproof vests work today. Densely woven materials, many times fibers, that become more dense when a force is applied to them. Now because of their design, bulletproof vests are really only designed to work one time very well. After the first time you get shot while wearing a bulletproof vest, the structural integrity of the vest is degraded. There's less of a chance that the next time you get shot while wearing the same vest that the bullet will stop and not kill you. Interestingly, that's exactly how this hydrostatic gel layer works. Now, it works much more efficiently than a Kevlar vest, but if you put too much force into it, for example, falling from space at the beginning of Halo 3, then you might end up making this layer useless. There are exhaust ports on the Mjolnir armor that can actually shoot this layer outside of the Mjolnir armor. This is most likely what happened to Master Chief when he fell from space at the beginning of Halo 3, so it's a little bit weird that we don't take fall damage for the rest of Halo 3. Just saying. Bet you thought I wasn't going to bring up the shields. Well, I am. One of the most important aspects of Spartan's armor is that they can take damage without actually having any bodily harm because of their energy shield. The UNSC did not develop energy shields on its own. It was actually reverse engineered from Covenant technology, meaning they found some Covenant shield technology and said, okay, how can we make this work for our armor? It wasn't as simple as that. It actually took 20 years with over 40 scientists to make the shields work for human armor. Right now, the US Army pays someone with a master's in engineering about a hundred thousand dollars a year that's a very average figure and I don't even know if they would pay someone more in the UNSC so over 20 years and using 40 scientists man hours alone for this would cost over 80 million dollars just to take Covenant technology and make it work for the humans and that doesn't even include materials workspaces or anything else used in the research and development process and that's in today's money there is no way to tell how much this stuff would cost 500 years in the future US inflation rates are pretty low right now about 2%. They used to be much higher. But even if we only had a 2% inflation rate for 500 years, this would still cost 10 times as much, $800 million. Now, if you get hurt in the suit and can't find a health pack, you can use the automatic biofoam injectors. We saw firsthand what biofoam can do in Halo 3 ODST. The idea of biofoam is that it is a foam that you can squirt into a wound to help stop the bleeding very quickly. There's nothing currently out there on the market used for soldiers in the field right now, but some forms of biofoam are actually being used 
products for cosmetic perks. They're very expensive though, costing about $800 per milliliter. However, a doctor did develop a foam that could work similarly to biofoam in Halo. The project was given a $25 million grant for more research, but it's not currently FDA approved for use. There's also an idea floating around of injectable sponges. It doesn't work the same as biofoam because it's not a foam, but it could help stop bleeding in the field. Now I know only 3% of my viewers are female, but tampons were actually used in a similar way for bullet wounds. You got shot? Stick a tampon in there. It'll soak it up. Joking aside, we're probably not that far off from seeing biofoam used in the military and then probably in civilian hands. The biggest problem we face with biofoam now isn't getting the foam into you, it's getting it out. The biggest risk for using things like biofoam is that if a bunch of biofoam gets into your bloodstream, it could lodge in your arteries and cause a clot. That clot could potentially do more damage than a bullet wound. Hopefully, science finds an answer, because I'm just a Halo YouTuber, like, I'm not gonna help. The suit is also equipped with an advanced heads-up display. That's why if you pick up any random weapon in the game, the suit already knows what weapon you've picked up and changes it on your heads-up display. The sensors can also tell how much ammo you have. So it's basically like if you were wearing Google glasses, but they were connected to your entire body. The suit also doubles as a space suit because it is vacuum sealed. And because it's vacuum sealed, it's pretty easy to supply an oxygen supply. All you would need is a small oxygen condenser somewhere in the suit. NASA actually has plans of making a machine that can convert carbon dioxide, what we breathe out, into oxygen. Now, their proposed system is huge, but if you were 500 years in the future, it's not too outlandish to think that you could get a small one. Now, one of the most important layers of Mjolnir armor is the layer of reactive metal liquid crystal. This layer is made of woven crystal, which forms a super dense layer of computer memory that allows AI to inhabit the armor. This was normally only possible on massive starships. It can also help apply force, doubling lifting capacity and increasing reaction time by a factor of five. This increase in performance comes from a layer of lithium nibicine. It's essentially a layer of artificial muscle, which of course helps increase performance. This layer increases the performance of the Mjolnir armor to give Spartans their enhanced abilities. But due to the massive increase in force that's applied to a body wearing the armor, it is not safe for normal humans to wear this armor. Spartans are augmented to not feel as much pain, to have better and bigger muscles, to be physically larger, and to have stronger bones with carbide ceramic ossification. If you didn't have all of those augmentations and tried to put on some Spartan armor, you would definitely end up killing yourself. Speaking of controlling the suit, have you ever noticed that some of the characters in the Halo universe have a small little thing at the back of their head? That's the port for a neural interface. It's essentially a connection into your central nervous system. For Spartans, it connects to the armor and gives them better and more accurate control. Because the armor is so powerful, even a Spartan could have a lot of trouble powering it and moving in it if they didn't have a connection through their central nervous system. Not only that, but the neural interface can use the subject's brain for increased processing power. It can increase the performance of the reactive metal liquid crystal layer to give them more processing power in the battlefield. And to finish, the whole suit is powered by a microfusion reactor. These reactors are extremely efficient. The fusion reactor in the Mjolnir armor is capable of providing power for 15 years of continuous operation. That's enough time for Halo to go from the top of the FPS scene to basically fading into nothingness. There's also a couple other little things that I didn't mention in the video. Small things like filters to remove toxins and solar powered lighting. All in all, this suit is very comprehensive and pretty much thinks of anything that a Spartan could run into and has an answer for it. Like I said at the start of this video, the Mjolnir armor is the most advanced piece of tactical military hardware in human hands. The inspiration for this video came because I wanted to figure out how much a suit of Master Chief's armor would actually cost. The problems I ran into were that there's just so much advanced technology in this suit that there's nothing in the real world today that I could even compare it to. Basically, if a suit like this existed today, not only could no one use it, but if someone could, it would basically be unstoppable. At the very least, I hope you were a little bit entertained and I hope you learned something about Master Chief's armor. If you liked this video and maybe want to learn a little bit more about Halo, one of the easiest ways is with Audible. Audible is an audiobook service from Amazon. They currently have all of the Halo novels on audiobook, so you can learn a lot more about Halo lore. Currently, Audible is offering a free trial to anyone that clicks the link in the description and signs up there. You'll get a free audiobook as well as a free 30-day trial that you can cancel anytime. And here's the best part. Even if you cancel, you get to keep that audiobook. You have nothing to lose and only a bunch of Halo lore knowledge to gain. So click the link in the description to get started with your free and risk-free 30-day trial of Audible. I want to thank you all for watching. If you've never seen me before, I make tons of awesome Halo content that I think you will enjoy. So please hit that subscribe button. You will definitely not be disappointed. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please go down to the comment section below and comment down there. I love reading comments. It is my favorite part about YouTube. Thank you all for watching. Please stay notable, and I will see you in the next video.